All right, morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. All right, let's get right into it, Yeezy. All right, well, let's talk about what we know so far about Salvador Ramos. He was the suspected Texas school shooter. We still have to say suspected. An 18-year-old gunman, they're saying that he allegedly shot and killed 18 school children and two adults at a Texas elementary school. Now, they're saying before that happened, he messaged a stranger, I'm about to, just hours before he opened fire. And this was at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde in Texas. He attended the town's high school, and they said he reportedly shot his grandmother before driving to the school armed with a handgun and possibly a rifle. And a manager at Wendy's told the New York Times that he worked there for a year and that he quit about a month ago, that he always kept to himself. He also allegedly tagged a stranger in an Instagram picture of guns, and that account has been taken down since. But according to these reports, he said, what, uh, he said you're going to repost my gun pics to a girl on May 12th. She said, what's your guns got to do with me? He said, just wanted to tag you. And then he messaged her, I'm about to. And then she asked about to what? And he said, I'll tell you before 11. He said he would text her in an hour. And he urged her to respond. Now, here's what one student um, had to say. His name is Jordan about what happened during the incident. We just hear all kinds of gunshots going off, like nonstop, like constantly gunshots. And the world over here all scared on the ground, fearing for our lives. Mm, 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 mm. And these were mostly third and fourth graders at this school. Again, I told you it's an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas. And um, here is what Joe Biden had to say about the shooting immediately after. Another massacre, Uvalde, Texas, an elementary school. Beautiful, innocent, second, third, fourth graders. And how many scores of little children who witnessed what happened see their friends die as if they're on a battlefield, for God's sake? They'll live with it the rest of their lives. Parents will never be the same. To lose a child is like having a piece of your soul ripped away. There's a hollowness in your chest. You feel like you're being sucked into it and never going to be able to get out. It's suffocating. And it's never quite the same. Mm. And there's, um, there's nothing that makes you feel more helpless than this as a parent. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? We, we try to keep our kids safe. We try to keep them in safe spaces. School is supposed to be a safe space, mm-hmm. you know? And I now, court- don't have any answers to how you slow down any of this, stop any of this. I I, I don't know how you legislate hate. Mm-hmm. Now, according to sources, <clears throat> the gunman first shot his grandmother at a separate scene. Authorities initially said that his grandmother was killed, but later they said she's in critical condition. He then crashed his car outside of the school. He came out with an AR-15 style rifle, according to multiple law enforcement sources. They do have that rifle body armor that uh, he was wearing in numerous magazines. He was engaged outside the building as he approached the school by a school district police officer who was shot by the suspect. After that, he entered the school and allegedly opened fire. Uh, and mainly the students who were killed were third and fourth graders as well as one teacher altogether at least 19 children Mm. and two teachers have been killed at Robb Elementary School here is what Vice President Kamala Harris had to say I would normally say in a moment like this we would all say naturally that our hearts break but our hearts keep getting broken so I think we all know and have said many times with each other enough is enough as a nation We have to have the courage to take action and understand the nexus between what makes for reasonable and sensible public policy to ensure something like this never happens again. To the people of Uvalde, uh, please know that this is a room full of leaders who grieve with you. And one last thing, Golden State Warriors coach Steve Kerr, ahead of the... um the Dallas Mavericks game finals uh, last night also spoke. When are we going to do something? I'm tired. I'm I'm so tired of getting up here and offering condolences to, to the devastated families that are out there. Enough. There's 50 senators right now who refuse to vote on H.R. 8, which is a background check rule that the House passed a couple years ago. It's been sitting there for two years. And there's a reason they won't vote on it. 
to hold on to power. So I ask you, Mitch McConnell, I ask all of you senators who refuse to do anything about the violence and school shootings and supermarket shootings, I ask you, are you going to put your own desire for power ahead of the lives of our children and our elderly and our churchgoers? Because that's what it looks like. Steve Kerr is right. I just I still don't see how you legislate hate, though. But, you know, wherever there's a bunch of people, wherever there's a place where folks congregate, I feel like there needs to be armed security and metal detectors. Like, all public venues need to have armed security and metal detectors because it feels like these evil cowards seem to be running up in places yeah. where they know humans are the most vulnerable. And then they'll say, well, where do we get the money from? How do we just give 40, what, million, billion dollars to send to Ukraine? Or it is born. Where, where, do we, where do we get the money yeah. to do that? How do we send all this money to all these other nations? I'm sure this country can afford metal detectors and, you know, uh, armed security at well, metal, metal detectors, I don't think, would have did as much, but definitely armed security at these big places, at these airports, at these malls. We got them at the airports. Or malls, malls, schools, schools, churches now. Churches. Any place where folks congregate, where large crowds congregate, they, they and should 90% be And 90% of the students at that school were Hispanic. They said 81% were hmm. lower income. One woman, Angel Garza, was looking for her her child, a Marie Jo, and she finally did confirm. Thank you, everyone, for the prayers and help trying to find my baby. She's been found. My little love is now flying high with the angels above. Please don't take a second for granted. Hug your family. Tell them you love them. Yeah, I don't care what those kids were. They were human. They were human and they were kids, you know? And there's nothing that makes you feel more helpless than this as a a parent because I just don't know what a safe space is anymore. There is no safe space. That is your front page news. All right. Get it off your chest. Let's talk about it. 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hello. Who's this? It's Robo. Keith Sports Day is my real name. Robo, what's up, King? Fam, this is devastating, uh, this, this issue with uh, this violence with these guns, man. I'm a retired mm-hmm. lieutenant from police near New York. Andy, I know you got family that's, that's tired from the job. Uh, our biggest problem with why there's this, this, this disrespect with these guns is that we've got politicians who just don't care. Black folks need to stop thinking that you know, Democrats are, are, are really our friends. I'm not a Republican. I'm a Democrat. But we got to hold these politicians accountable. Yeah. yeah. I, I, but, you know, I, I, I agree. I, the gun issue is interesting to me, man, because— you know, I do feel like, you know, you do have to have some type of regulation on guns and, you know, who who has access to them. But I just don't think you can legislate hate, bro, because the, the triggers of these guns don't pull themselves. But the problem there, though, Tony, real talk, is that they are regulated because they, they're, they're against sensible gun control. Everyone thinks that they need to own a gun or they need to. The Second Amendment talks about uh, possession of assault weapons. They don't. You know, they, this young man who's 18 years old, you got parents buying their kids guns. Man. Oh, no, I agree, I agree with an you AR, on that. And an AR-15, like who needs an AR-15? No, I, listen, I, I agree with you that there needs to be some type of gun control, but I'm just saying I don't see how you legislate hate. But, but you, you know what, brother, let me ask you a question, right? And, 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 and you know, and, and we appreciate you all the service that you did. When it comes to gun laws, you look at a lot of these nations that I travel to when I'm DJing, and you see that the police don't have guns and guns are banned. Do you think that will work better? Because we had a point right now. It's like, you know, I'm I'm a grown ass man, and I feel like I need a gun, and I have a couple of them at my house. And then when I when I go out of town, I'm allowed to carry, and I do carry because the bad guys have guns, and I want to protect myself. I want to make it home to my my wife and my family every day. I I, I posted something on Facebook when they were talking about the shootings and pay the people all the time. I used to always say you really don't pay because all these un, all these guns out here, everyone. Who, who um, possesses a firearm? They don't even go to they don't even go to shooting ranges. You know, I heard you talk about you and your wife go to shooting ranges yep. and be fine. But the average cat, even I'm, I'm talking about these, these these so-called you know heroes out here you know, who were strapped walking around the street just shooting up the block. Why don't you just go to the range, get control of this gun? I tell you, you know how to how to how to how to live out here in the streets because you got to do what you got to do, but. If you're out here just busting shots and you're killing nine-year-old kids, you know, babies sitting in the car seats, this is ridiculous. Oh, I agree with all of that. Yeah, I, I agree. I and, agree and, with and, you, you know, on that. And, and I agree with, with, with 
what Angela E said about the AR-15s. I don't feel like, you know, right. civilians need, you know, those type of weapons. But I will say this, too. I mean, now they got all types of contraptions where they could have a handgun that 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 has a thirty clip on it with a barrel on it. Like it's it's ridiculous. Listen, every conversation we're having about guns, you're right. You, but once again, how do you legislate hate? How do you legislate what's in a person's heart? Like you know how evil you got to be to say I'm gonna go to this grocery store and shoot it up and kill all of these black people. I'm gonna go to this church and kill all of these Asian people. I'm gonna go kill all of these kids. Like that's something in a person's heart that you can't legislate. No, you're right. But how do you stop it? How do you slow it I down? I don't know. You can't because the, hey, evil is just evil. That's but how I, do you I don't slow know. that ish down? I don't know. I really don't. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. Get it off your chest. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. This is Ryan from Firehouse and Brushes. How you what guys up, doing? Ryan? What's up, Ryan? Get it off your chest, brother. Um, I got a couple points I want to make about all this stuff's going on. Yes, sir. One, I used to work at a high school in uh, Newark, New Jersey, where all the students coming in, they had to get checked for weapons. There was a cop that worked there in the school, and the security guards were on point. But I felt safe there. So now I'm working at a, at a high school in New Jersey in this nice suburb, and I'm always wondering, these kids aren't getting checked when they come into the building, you know, how safer am I here? That's right. The second point I want to make is um, the whole thing with the gun laws. If that young man had to wait until he was 18 to get his, his rifle or whatever, what makes him not less likely to go out and kill someone? So could you guys explain to me how changing the gun laws are going to make people not go out and kill people. Brother, I feel you, and that's what makes you feel so helpless in these situations is because we know we can create legislation to slow down the access to guns, but you can't legislate what's in somebody's heart. But let me ask you a question. Do you think do you think an 18-year-old should be able to, to purchase a high-powered rifle like that? I mean, because they're not allowed to get a handgun, but, I mean, you can get an AR-15 or one of these shotguns that can hold 10 slugs in it that, you know, at an 18-year-old kid, they could just start firing away. I, I think that there should be some kind of limitation. Like, if you want to get a rifle to go hunting, that's one thing. But you don't need a high-powered shotgun if you're 18. I mean, I, you can't even I drink agree. alcohol at 18. I, I agree. I, I don't think. I mean, I honestly don't think you need a high-powered weapon at all. You know what I mean? Like you said, maybe if you want to go hunting, but... I mean, in question, when you buy these weapons, like when you go make these purchases, mm -hmm. do you get put into a registry? I don't know. Like, shouldn't you like if I go buy an AR-15 right now, shouldn't I automatically I get put on some list, some watch list or something like that? Uh, I don't think you do. But I mean, the, the crazy part is, is, is once you're 18, you could buy a high power rifle. You know what I mean, it's not like, you know, a handgun when you have to be 21, but they do a background check when you do a license and it takes a day. But if you go from somebody that's not a licensed person buying it, there's no background check. Some of these gun shows, there's no background check. And some of these people, when you buy things online, there's no background check. That's the Senate. That's the bill that they've been trying to pass that they've been having difficulties passing. <clears throat> but I yeah, I think I even think to get a license, matter. you have to, you know, you take the classes, you take the road test, you do all of those things. But do you have to do that to get a gun? No. If you want to, if you want a concealed no license, you do have to take a class. I had to take a class for my concealed. No type of evaluation, that, no. nothing. Just a background check. I, 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 I agree, and I agree with all these gun conversations. I'm not opposed to any of them, but, man, it still feels like we're not dealing with the root of the issue, and that is what is in somebody's heart. Like, what's what's the hate that drives somebody to do this type of mass murder? Yeah, but, but how do you change that? I don't know. As I'm saying, I don't know how you legislate what's like, in somebody's heart. Like, I really that, that And that's what makes you feel helpless. Some people just hate, like, the dude that did the thing in Buffalo. In Buffalo, like, he, he hated, hated black people. people. That's it. How or do the you guy, change that, and the, the, people, uh, the guy that did the shooting in the church in Cali, that, that's kind of under the radar. People aren't talking about it. He did that because those were Asian people. Right. Like, I don't know. How where you, does that hate come from? I, bro, you, you, your guess is as good as mine. Hello, who's this? This is DJ, close from Providence. Good morning. What's up, brother? Get it off your chest. Yeah, I just want to uh, talk about the uh, school shooting. You know, I have three kids of my own, mm -hmm. all girls. Um, and this is something that I literally think about every day before the situation. And it's sad. Like, um, yeah, it's scary at the same time. I have a 14, 11, and a 6-year-old. And I drop them off to school every morning. And I think oh, about Lord, one man. Of my man. Yeah, just one of my fears. And, uh, I, you know, it's, it's just a sickening. It's a sickening feeling to see this. Yeah, I mean, when you drop them off school, you just pray that they're safe until you come back and pick them up. And a lot of times as parents, we don't necessarily think about this because you feel like, you know, you drop them off in school and they're safe. That was supposed to be a safe place, right? 
as a parent, exactly. when, even as a kid, when your parents dropped you off, that was a safe place. But now is you just don't know, and it, it, it's scary yeah. as ish. And like I said, every morning I wake my kids up, I kiss them, I hug them, I tell them I love them, I pray with them, and that's all you can do. And you know, it's and you know, I'm a, I'm a I have anxiety like crazy. Like I have camera, like the you know the school has cameras, so you can watch the halls. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm right. always on the cameras because it's it's like I'm scared. I'm glad you. I'm a you, thinker too. Yeah. No, I'm glad. I'm glad Envy brought up uh, the anxiety because you know I deal with really bad anxiety, and one of my coping mechanisms when I have a panic attack is my therapist always tells me to think about all the times you thought something bad was gonna happen, but how many times did something bad actually happen? And that works in most cases. But when it comes to stuff like this, it does not work. Because no. I cannot get my mind off these tragedies. All right, I, In my mind, this could happen to any of us. We're not special. We go to the grocery store. We go Absolutely. to places of worship. Our kids go to school. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like there's nothing that makes you feel, you know, more, more helpless than this. Yeah. Sheesh.